can't beat the in-person interactions, the lunches, the dinners. The quality of the people that you meet over coffee here is just phenomenal. Welcome everyone on the Back to Basic track. Uh, today we are going to talk about forwarding references. My name is Mateusz Pusz. I am the principal software engineer at EPAM Systems and also independent trainer and consultant. And additionally, I am also an active VOTIC member of the ICO C++ committee. As this track is somehow special, because we are here not only to inform but also to teach, we are going to do it a bit differently, and I call it, let's say, workshopy style, because we don't have time for a full workshop, so it will be a workshopy style lecture. So, uh, during the lecture, I will try to actually provide rationale for some decisions, facilitate discussion with, also with AHA slides, the quiz we are going to have, force you to think with this, and we'll describe some pitfalls, we'll describe some corner cases, and provide some recommendations. Typically during workshops, at least on my workshops, we have lots of coding. Of course, here we don't have time for it, so that's why it's a workshop style. And the quiz uh, is under this QR code. If you can scan it, it would be great. And, and attend this. We have a really nice uh, prize for it. The prize is this figure of Scott Myers. <laughs> and it's here, waiting for the winner. Uh, it's funded by the CPPCon organizers, so thank you very much. And why Scott Myers? Scott Y. Myers was, or he still is, but he is retired right now, um, is one of the best speakers I ever have seen, and he is one of the best trainers I've ever seen. And it happens that actually Scott Myers was the one that officially invented the term universal references when the committee didn't know that it's something special at this point. And then universal references became forwarding references, and this is the subject of today's talk. So, if, in case you would like to win this special prize, join the quiz when we start in a few minutes. But first, let's have some short introduction about value categories, because this is really important for us to understand what value categories are in order to follow this lecture. And well, so value categories are about the expressions, about what you can type and, and how this behaves in the code, right? And this is the strange tree that you can find in many different places. And I will try to actually provide you some guidance on how to understand this tree, what it means, what are those cryptic names here. So generalize L values, so GL values that you can find here, right, in the tree, uh, are called as determ are determines the identity of an object, bit field, or a function. So basically what it means is that everything that has an identifier that, that you can refer to through the identifier is a GL value, right? And then on the other hand, in the totally opposite corner of the tree, we are having PR values. Pure R values are basically things that are temporary, something that do not have any identifier. You cannot refer to that unless you assign it to some identifier, right? So those are like things returned from the function, not assigned to anything yet, or like a temporary created in place. Those are PR values, right? And then third thing are X values. X values Officially stated, this is the GL value that denotes an object or bit field whose resources can be reused. Basically what it means is that you have some identifier, GL value, right? And you apply to move on it. If you apply to move on it, you are saying that I'm passing the resources to some other scope, right? And the scope can do anything with that, uh, what, what it desires, and I can reuse this identifier in this in this code because it's left in so-called value but initialized state, which means that at least you can destroy or assign any resources to it, right? So to repeat, GL value, everything that has an identifier, PR value, everything that doesn't have an identifier, so a temporary, and X value is something that has an identifier and we applied to move on it, right? And then we have two remaining things, and those are quite easy. L, L value is just a GL value, that it's not an X value. So all of the identifiers that you didn't apply to move on it are L values. And then R values are either X values or PR values. Easy? Okay, so uh, let's try how we understand this because as I said, it's crucial for us to understand it. So let's move to quiz. 
in, in case you didn't join yet, please use this QR code. I will give you like 30 seconds in order to, uh, to, to scan it. And we are switching to the quiz. I see 70, 70 people joined, counter still counting up, 80 people. We have room for 200, so don't be shy, just join. 90. One hundred. Do we have one hundred people here? Don't try from several devices with different answers. It doesn't work. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on then with the quiz. For any differences, quiz. The rules of the quiz. There will be multiple choice questions. The more correct answers you select, the better. The more points you get for the for the answer. However, if you select any incorrect answer, you get immediately zero points for the entire question. So the hint is to only mark the answers you are sure about and don't guess, especially because the sooner you answer, the sooner you click the submit button that is at the, at the bottom, the more points you get for this because faster answers get more points as well. So with this, let's wait for everyone to join. Don't take maybe too, too much time and find nice emoji for you. Uh, I see 102 players ready to join, but 111 online, so I will wait like 10 more seconds for you. And five seconds, three seconds. All right, first question. Expression on which value category is passed to full in this case? Select all that apply. More than one question is possible. All right, the correct answer is an R value and PR value, right? It was a temporary, so it's PR value and PR value is an R value. That's why both of those answers are correct. The rest, unfortunately, are not in this case. Let's try another one. Have you any other nice questions? It should move by itself if you're online. Maybe you are not connected properly. All right, so this was uh, L value, right? Because it was an, an identifier that you referred through, 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 the, through, the, through the name. And as L value is a GL value, it's also correct. Two more. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this is x value because you applied to move on it. X value is an R value and also it is a GL value. So all of those three are correct. This is the only expression that has three categories in this tree. Right? And it seems that we start to understand how it works. There is last one question about the categories and we'll move on to the next Chapter. All right, so this is R value and P R value in this case, right? So it seems that most of us already understand how it works. So let's come back to slides for a moment. And let's uh, see the next um, example. The next example will be uh, still quiz, but we are going to talk about binding, about how, which expressions will bind to which functions that we have. In this case, we have two overloads at the top of the, of this, of the screen. 
Then we are having three constants or three or, or three variables and a, or two variables and a function basically, and th those will not change in next slide, so so we don't have to focus on them. And then you have some function calls, and you want to find out which of those will compile. So coming back to our quiz, and let's see. Which of those will compile in this case for pointers? Maybe I will switch to, to those slides. Maybe it may be easier for you to read. Right, the answer is none of the above. None of those will actually work in this case because those are function taking pointers and we are not passing a pointer in any single case here, right? So uh, in order to pass a variable to a function taking a pointer, you have to take the address of the variable, right? So let's try again and let's take the address and see what binds in this case in our quiz again. Um, maybe this will be easier. So this time we have only one function taking a pointer. Right, let's see the results. Right, the first one compiles, and the rest should not. And you are right, mostly, in this case. Okay, so let's try another one. Uh, let's move, and yeah, this was the, the answer. And the next one will be const int pointer as a function. Let's see how it binds, and if you know how, how it works. Uh, this is seven out of 11, so we are nearly, nearly done with the questions. Right, yes, two first overloads, two first function calls work correctly because you can assign or you can bind both a pointer and a const pointer to a function taking const pointer. You cannot assign, actually you cannot take even an address of a moved from object, uh, so two other things are, are not possible and temporary also you cannot take an address, so that's why the others one will not compile, right? But in case of a const pointer you can assign the regular pointer and the const pointer to such function because this function doesn't mutate the data. Okay. So now we know how pointers work. What about references? This is next question in our quiz. This time we are not taking any address, right? The code at the bottom changed.
All right. So in this case, references are similar to, to pointers. Uh, for reference that is non-const, only the first call site works correctly. You cannot assign a temporary. You cannot assign an error value. You cannot assign it an, uh, the const value to it because we don't want to um, mutate the const reference object in our scope. All right, so the last question about the L value references. What about the const L value? If you get a const L value, the last question, you probably know what is the answer already, so it should be faster because it's similar. Let's see if you know how, it, how this one works. Three, two, one. Well, time's up. All right. Yes. Uh, actually, all of the options will bind correctly with constant values. Notice how it's different comparing to the pointers that we had before, right? Pointers, in case of pointers, only the first two were binding correctly in case on constant value. Constant value could be actually called a universal reference because it binds to everything, right? However, this was not the term that actually. Uh, Scott Myers meant when he talked about it, but constant value can bind to any object you have in your code. Of course, it makes it const, but still, it, you can pass anything to such a function. All right. So, yes, all of the options are correct. And maybe let's summarize the differences between pointers and references, right? Pointers are objects. A uh, reference is an alias, not an object by itself. Pointers always occupy memory, and reference may not occupy storage. They are just aliases in the compiler's logic. Arrays of pointers are legal, and you cannot make arrays of references. It's impossible in the language. Pointers to pointers are legal, and references or pointers to references are not allowed because references do not have an address by themselves, right? Um, pointers to, to void are legal, right? We know void pointers from C everywhere. But you cannot create a reference to void because, well, it doesn't work. You cannot reference a void object for the reference. Pointers may be initialized, and references always have to be initialized at the place of construction. You cannot leave a reference and then assign a value to it later on. It has to be initialized at this point where you're actually defining it, and it is the benefit of reference because it's always initialized, and probably the only use case for pointers in C++ where actually you don't know how to initialize things at the definition, then you need a pointer, right? Or an optional. And, well, so uh, mutability. Pointer can be reassigned after initialization. Reference, not. Reference, when it's assigned, it cannot be changed. And this is another huge difference between those, because if you need to change something, for example, you're implementing something like finite state machine, and you need to change states, then a reference will not work for you because you cannot change the assigned thing that reference is pointing to. And if a pointer can be CV qualified, reference can't be CV qualified. As I teach on my, on my trainings, you can doing something like remove, refer, remove const on a reference doesn't work because there is no, no such thing as a const reference, right? If you think about it, conference behaves like a const pointer by itself already because you cannot change the thing it points to. Uh, C++ fuck written a long time ago, I think, by Bjarne, uh, says explicitly, use reference where you can and pointers when you have to. And that's a good recommendation, right? All right, so maybe let's move on to C++ 11. Let's introduce error value references and see how they bind in our case. So those are the last questions we have in the quiz before we find the winner. Two last questions.
guys, you overflow the crying counter. It doesn't <laughs> count anymore. <laughs> right? 1K. Oh, one oh, it counts. Try more. <laughs> All right. So, with R value references, you cannot assign two first uh, calls uh, because those basically are L values, either const or non const L value because it has an identifier, right? So it will not bind in this case. Next ones are R values. However, the const R value will not bind to this reference. That's why moved from object is an, is an R value, it works, and temporaries are R values, they work, but the move on const object creates a const R value, and it doesn't work. And, there is, and I just spoiled the next question. Because next question will be about const R value, which is strange, but it exists in the system, so I want you to be aware of it, although it doesn't have much use cases, uh, but it exists. So, the last question. All right, all of the temporaries, all of the R values mark, and, and basically they are correct answers here. L values, again, do not work. So this is different than const L value. Const L value is binding to everything. Const R value binds only to R values, right? This is important to, to understand. So the Scott Myers goes to Kelvin. Where is Kelvin? Come, Kelvin. Maybe smile to the YouTube videos. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. I hope that you enjoyed it. And let's move on with, with the theory. Because now, as we know what is binding, we know value categories, we can move on and discuss the subject of this talk. Uh, first of all, I would like to mention one more difference between console values and R values. Const, with console values, you can pass everything, as we said. Uh, it binds to everything. Uh, however, it doesn't allow you to mutate this thing at all. Even if it's temporary, even though if no one outside of your function sees that, because this is temporary, you cannot mutate this, which sucks. Because if no one else is using this, why you can't mutate this, right? This was really limiting, and that's why C++11 introduced R value references that are similar in this case, but they allow the object to be mutated. And this enables us move semantics. All right? It's important to understand that R value references to const can be mutated. They are similar to references to const, except they bind only to R values. So um, this thing that I shown you on the last slide in the last quiz question is there, but it's like const value, it doesn't change much, right? Well, it binds only to our values, so maybe it's some use case for that, but it is not mutable, so you cannot implement move semantics with it. Another point to understand is that R value reference variables are R values when used in expressions, and this is one of the most important things to understand about, about move semantics uh, when you actually start with it, right? If I have an object of, of int ref ref type named x, and I try to call bool of x, I will get compile time error. Because we already know that L values do not bind with R values, and this is an L value because it has an identifier. Everything that has identifier, even if it is of an R value type, is an L value. So this is an L value of R value type. In order to make it work, you have to apply std move on it. This is a common issue I see, like in, for example, in sinks. Like you have a class that has an object like string inside as a member, people pass string as an R value, 
in a constructor and then just assign this in the constructor initializer list rather than move it there because they assume that this error value will just force the move assignment, move, move construction there, right? But it's not. If it has an identifier, it's an L value, a copy will be made. You have to remember about std move being there. By the way, std move does not move. It's just a fancy cast. It's a cast to an error value reference type, right? All move semantic related logic is implemented in a function, actually, that gets this error value reference. And actually, it doesn't have to move. It may move, it doesn't have to, but we never know. So we should assume that it's basically in a valid but unspecified state after this function is being called. So what is a forwarding reference? Forwarding reference is only valid in a case when you have deduced function template parameter declared, declared as an error value reference to an CV unqualified type template parameter. All those three points are really important. It has to be deduced in the specific function template. It has to have two ampersands and have no const and volatile specification. Qualification here, right? In C++20, you can also type it this way with auto ref because in C++20, we got generic functions and this is how you, how you can spell it with that syntax. It's a special kind of reference that binds to any function argument. So similarly to const L values, you can pass anything to this reference. And the difference is that it doesn't force you to make it const. It will be whatever it got, right? It just binds to everything and provides it as it was passed to the function. So in this case, all of the options, again, are marked as OK. Before we talk more about for references, Probably the most important thing here to understand is where you are not dealing with a forwarding reference. This is not a forwarding reference. Even though it's a function template with the use type T, type T is const qualified in this case, which doesn't make it a forwarding reference. It is just a const or value reference to T. In this case, only U and Z are for the differences, because only u and z are template parameters of this function template constructor, right? t is a template parameter, but it's not a parameter being deduced in this function call. It's a parameter fixed for a class during the class definition, and at the time of construction, it's already a fixed type, like you just could copy-paste the type to the constructor. It's not being deduced here. Of course, this is also not a for the difference, because stood vector of t is not the same as t. And there are some special cases, for, for, of course, for some initializer lists, because initializer lists are special everywhere in the, in the code, so it doesn't create for the reference as well for this case. Uh, some people call for the reference a universal reference. It was uh, coined by Scott Myers, right? And, but uh, there are some disagreements. Uh, a committee in C14 uh, decided to call it differently. Because actually, before C14, it seems that committee was not aware that it is something special, something different. And, and it didn't have a name. So, so Scott came up first and said, those are universal references. And, and great, because we needed to actually uh, hear it in order to acknowledge that it's the fact. And, some people do not agree that they're universal, so we call them forwarding references. For example, why they are maybe not that universal? By universal, I mean to have universal use in every single situation. There are some issues connected to forwarding references as well that you should be aware of. If you have forwarding references like this one, and we call all of those things, as I said, it binds everywhere, but notice how many template instantiations are being created by the compiler. Even though those may be inlined, it probably are, because this probably is a simple function, still, the instantiation happens, which takes time in, at compilation time, right? Notice that uh, there are some special rules that make for L values, here, make this parameter to be used as a template, as a, as a reference, sorry, uh, and typically it would, would not be the case before C++11. This special rule allows us to actually implement forwarding that we are going, perfect forwarding with std forward that we are going to talk about later. And let's compare this one to const error value references. When you have const error value reference, 
Even with the time that you see, this is const, R value, sorry, const, const L value reference, not R value, L value reference. As we said, this binds to everything as well, right? But in this case, we are instantiating always the same type. Faster, simpler, and binds to everything. Right? When you're talking about only about binding, there's not, not much use case for, uh, for perfect forwarding. Because if you are having perfect forwarding function, you don't know if this value is const or not. You don't know if you can mutate this or not. So you cannot actually implement anything there valuable for this specific object of, uh, of type T. Right? Maybe, of course, you can do that. So if const is const and so on, and then do some branches inside. But this is not the logic of this function. This is not how this function should work, right? Either it's a getter or a setter. And not getter setter depending on some complex logic inside. That's why I claim that, well, this function should be used mostly only to forward this to some other function where the dispatch will happen. Because those functions will have specific types, like the type being a const or not const, and will be able to mutate or not depending on, on the argument being passed. This function by itself will not do anything useful with this other than just passing this to next functions for a dispatch of some operations. Right, so to summarize this slide, both routing differences and const L value differences binds to everything. However, the former might be more expensive at compile time. And also in runtime, if F is non-trivial, probably you may have some, let's say, template uh, bloat, which we don't like. So to summarize, uh, binding, right? Pointers, pointers, assume that, assume that you take an address of those, bind only to L values. Const pointers bind to um, L values and const L values. L value references only to L values. Const L value references binds to everything. R values only to X value and PR value. Const R value binds to all of the R values here. And trefref, so for R reference, binds to everything as well. So this is about binding. If you need to implement a function that binds to everything and just needs to read the data, consider using const L value reference because it's the cheapest thing to do and it's easy to understand what the function does. Right? You don't need a forwarding reference for the case if you need just to just read the data. So forwarding reference serves mostly to forward to other functions to dispatch, right? So those are the functions we want to use for dispatch of our type. We have, in this case, L value, const L value, and an L value function. And if we didn't have forwarding inference, we had to write free wrappers, then do something before, and then call the function with the move on in case of values. It would be really inconvenient to write, especially in generic code. And especially if there will be more arguments than one because this will just be explosion of combinations for all of the cases. That's why we got additional tools for such use cases. And this is called perfect forwarding, and we got stood forward for it. Right? Forwarding differences preserve the value category of a function argument, making it possible to forward it by means of stood forward. So if you have those three functions that we've seen on the previous slide, now you can write one function template that does something and calls f, We've stood forward t of v, and it just works. Stood forward converts t to r value reference only in case if the argument was an r value. Otherwise, l value is being passed. And it preserves also, preserves also constness and volatileness of, of the object if needed. This is good enough implementation of stood forward. Um, basically, stood forward is a static cast that adds additional R value reference to the uh, parameter. And this works because we have so called reference collapsing rules in the language. Uh, it is permitted by the language to form references to references through type manipulations or in templates or type devs. So if I create a type dev with L value reference and const and, and, and R value reference, right? and they have this type dev here, I can add even more references to it. And only in case I have reference, R value reference here and R value reference here, I will end up with an R value as an output. In all other cases, I end up with an L value, 
And this is what makes toot forward possible, right? In this case, we are adding two R values. So only if this was an R value, then it will be an R value. Recommendation. Prefer forwarding preferences when you need to forward function category parameters to other functions while preserving their value category. If you don't care about value category, just use const L values, right? If you want to have preserving, if you want to preserve value categories, then stood forward is your friend. But let's see some possible issues that we have with, with that. Let's analyze things. Sync is, a, is an object typically that takes your data and stores it inside. The most efficient sync, uh, the, the constructor for it, are two overloads. One taking const L value, another one taking, const, taking R value. In this case, we are just copying the data because it is being owned by someone else and we need this copy because we want to store it for our use cases. And in case of R value, so in case we get a temporary or something that expires, we are just taking this information and storing this in our object string here, right? So this is the most efficient overload set you may write for things. No for all references needed. However, it doesn't scale. If you have two members, you have four functions to write. If you have three, fun three members, you have to write even more functions in order to make it work in all of the combinations. So you start to have some issues. A typical answer is to use a um, constructor that takes parameters by value. If the, if the objects passed are cheap to move, like string or vector is, then passing by value may be your friend here. Still, for the difference, it's not needed. It's good compromise, as I've written, because, well, it adds one move construction and destruction of a moved from object for L values and X value arguments. Those operations should be quite cheap in case of string and, and vector, so, as I said, it's good enough. Scales well and it's still quite fast. You don't have this explosion of constructors needed for this case. But if you're dealing with type that maybe is not uh, cheap, to, um, cheap to move, or uh, you want to actually um, use the forward difference for some other reasons, this is what you type, right? You're passing two things with forward differences. Those are deduced in this function template, so this is fine, and stood forward is being applied properly to both objects. But now, if I try to call it with this thing, int and double, it binds, but then fails to compile in the implementation of the function, which is probably not what I wanted to achieve. With the addition of for reference, I lost information what type I expect in the um, entry point of the function, right? I bind to everything with T, not only to strings. So what can I do with it? I can apply some concepts, right? In my other talks, I said that, that, that basically naked, like, like, like row T in templates is like, our, is like void pointer in, in C. So type name T is, is, a, is a void pointer of C++. So we provide some constraints saying, well, we expect T to be the same as string. This is a naive approach, not the subject, the title here. Why you say it's naive? Of course, it doesn't work, and this is what we wanted to achieve. If you pass a string here, because this is string literal, it works correctly. But if I have an L value, and pass an L value of string, and I expect this to work, it doesn't. What is the reason? Who knows? Why it doesn't work? Because we have a reference, exactly, right? Uh, text is an L value. Text is an L value here, so we're passing this by reference, and forwarding reference basically propagates properties exactly as it was obtained. So it will pass reference. T will be a reference type here, reference to string. And reference to string is not the same as string, right? And also, if it was const, it would be const reference to, uh, this would be reference to const string, to say it properly, right? And again, it will not pass. That's why, in order to make this work properly, you have to apply even more type traits and do remove CVRef of T and U. 
in order to make it work, right? And now expected code works. And notice how complicated it starts to be because comparing to the previous cases where I said, do not use T, just use string by value. And still, there are some cases that might be a surprise or issue for us. If I try to call this way our constructor that I expect, of course, to, to work with regular strings, it will not work, right? It will not work because this is an array of characters and this will not pass our check to be the same as string. So in order for this, if we want to have such thing, we have to think about it up front and change our constraints. So you can write convertible to string. It's less to type. It actually is a better approach in my opinion. Everything that's convertible to string will allow us to be passed to this constructor and will allow this code to work. In case you want to allow not only implicit but also explicit constructors, you may use std constructable from and this will allow also explicit constructors to work uh, and explicit conversions to happen in this, in this construction code of our my class. All right, so we know how to write a forwarding reference to, that takes properly our input parameter and forwards this to a sync. So now I have this specific code. It's called int or empty. It's a really simple optional. It takes, it stores a value by default zero. It is empty by default true. Right, so I have default constructor that by default provides those values. I hate to write body of the constructors. I always prefer to provide initializer in the members of the class. And then I have a constructor taking t ref convertible to int, because this is our value, and forward this, let's say int, right? Of course, it will be something more fancy in, in real code, not just int. And set empty to false, because I just assigned data to our optional. I have an empty function returning me an empty state and operator int that converts this object to int so I can verify if the value is already there. And I do some tests. I instantiate int or, int or, int or empty with the default construction, so it is empty, right? If I take empty, empty, it is empty. If I pass one, it is not empty, and I can check if one is one thanks to this conversion operator. Everything works fine so far. But now, I'm doing copy construction of empty. I'm copying empty to a new object, expecting it to be empty as well. And what I get? I get assertion failed. The question is why? Let's maybe see Compile Explorer when exactly we see this, this example. The funny thing is that if I will change the type of this int or empty at the beginning that I'm copying to const, it actually will pass the assert check. So if the object is const, it works. If the object is non-const, it starts to be non-empty. What happens here? What happens here is that there are some additional functions that you don't see in this code. One of them being, oh, what's here, what's something, come on, something strange happened, all right. One of them being our copy constructor, right? There is a, you don't see it, but, oh, I hate this keyboard. Uh -huh. Right, it would look something like, like this. And, or empty, oh, nearly. Good, close enough. Right. It's hard to type when you're standing here. Right, this is the, the, the thing that, that is there, but we don't see it. No matter if you do this or this, it is the same code. Right? So if I pass cost object to this class, this function is being selected during the overload resolution process. If I pass non-cost object to this class, this template, Perfect forwarding matches the best of all of the overloads. Because if I pass non-const object, then non-const overload is considered to be a better match than a const object in a function. And actually this code happens to actually compile only because I have this fancy conversion operator to int. 
So this int or empty being passed here is converted to int and empty set to false. Of course, in most cases, you will not have this fancy conversion operator and you will have a compiled error, which may be surprising to you, to, for you to see, but this will fail at compile time. But anyway, it is an issue that you should be aware of. I call it too perfect for warding. <laughs> right, so in order to prevent that, you have to constrain your constructor taking, taking a single forwarding reference parameter to state that this should be visible in the overall resolution process only in case type T is not the same as interempty. If type T is the same as interempty, you want the constructor to be selected, so this function would, would better not be there. That's why you provide constraints to say, just don't generate this function in this case for the compiler. Something quite important to remember. And the recommendation. Beware of constructors taking a single template parameter or a template parameter pack, because this is the same in case of one argument, of a forwarding reference type. They will hijack your copy constructor. All right. Next thing. But what if I want to pass an R value only, only temporaries? I don't want L value references to be possible to bind with my T referef. I don't know what T is, so I don't spell it like string or int because I don't know what T will be, but I want to implement R value reference, not forwarding reference. It's not that easy because right now it binds to everything and I want it to not compile in two first cases. Right? It actually sucks that when we actually, as a committee, was standardizing this, this feature, we didn't provide a different spelling for the forwarding reference. I don't know, free ampersands or whatever, right? We can always have more ampersands in the C++ language. Uh, but it should be spelled differently, stating this is a forwarding reference, not an R value reference, and leave R value references as they should be. In my opinion, this should be an R value reference to type T, and be consistent with all of the language. And forwarding reference should have a different spelling and then I will not have to show you this slide what's not a forwarding reference because it will be easy to see with free ampersands, for example. Right? And will not compile in case you put free ampersands and const, for example. We'll say it is not a valid syntax in C++ code. But we, not, but we didn't do it and we have to live with what we have. So let's see. This, those are the instantiations that will be called in all of those cases. The common thing in those two first cases that you don't want to actually work is that this type of foo, the type T here, is being deduced as an L value reference. So what we can do in order for, to make it work only for L values is to provide a constraint st stating that this will not work if T is an L value reference. And in this case, we have true L value references to deduce type T. It sucks that we have to type it, but this is, this is what, what we have. And it's good to actually realize that typing T ref ref is not an R value reference, it is an forwarding reference that it binds to everything, which may be surprising to a designer of some interface if the, this designer will not uh, basically be aware of this fact. Well, if you, price, if, if you add cost to TRFRF, this is a question from the back, right? Then it will, of course, bind only to R values, but you will not be able to do move semantics with it, right? But that's a good question, that's a yeah, good thing. It will be working right away. But you will not be able to implement move semantics in function F full. In case you wonder why it's L value reference and not is reference, is that even though during the deduction process, there will never be an R value reference because this is not how the deduction process works, but the user is still allowed to pass R value reference explicitly in stood forward, which should make R value reference and work with move semantics. That's why explicitly state and check for L value reference only to make sure that we are filtering only the L value references here and make move semantics work correctly.
Let's talk about capturing the element, the argument. For example, in coroutines, coroutines say that the state stores coroutine parameters of a function, and parameters passed by value are moved or copied, and by reference parameters remain references. If you want to preserve something, because coroutines are, well, functions that can basically uh, work to some point and then return the control to the, uh, to the uh, caller or, or resumer, and basically the stack has to, or and all of the state has to be preserved somewhere. If you will pass a reference and you don't preserve the lifetime, in the next resumption, you may have basically dangling reference um, access, right? So how you can implement this? If you implement this this way with, for example, you have here protein foo, and we are calling this from some wrapper bool, right? And you call it with here L-value reference, it is fine because this L-value reference is preserved on the stack of the function, and if this co-weight will basically suspend and return the control to the uh, resumer or the, or the caller, this I will be somewhere stored on the stack of this, of this function and, and preserved. But in case of temporary, it will be gone. And this coroutine then will store the reference because those are the rules. By reference parameters, even R-value reference parameters remain references. And you have lifetime issue. What you can do here in order to make it, to make it work? There is a trick that actually you can benefit using forwarding references that in this case you are writing function foo to take an object by value, not by reference. And then you are passing here foo with stood forward from this function template and you are stating u explicitly as a type. With this you are forcing this specific binding to happen. In this case, t will not be int ref if ref in this function. It will be passed by value int, which is exactly what we want to achieve, because we want the, this coroutine to have by value parameters to be moved or copied for later. This is the trick I learned while writing my MP core library to, prevent, to preserve lifetimes of objects that can be possibly passed by references. All right, so we know how to perfectly forward parameters. Let's maybe discuss a bit how we can perfectly return parameters from a function. So if you would try to perfect return something by auto, it will not work because auto always decays. It always tries to be a copy, right? So all of the references will not be returned by references. It will be returned by, by value, and then it will not be a perfect return of a function foo, whatever it returns. If you do auto ref, in this case, it's maybe a bit better, but it will always be reference. So if you pass something by value, it will become a reference to this value, and then will dangle. Hopefully the compiler will prevent that, will provide some diagnostics that you're trying to form a, point, a reference to a temporary object, but it is also not a good solution. A good solution is to make decal type auto, a new thing in C14 that allowed us actually to return things as it is returned by function foo. If you return a reference, it returns reference. If it returns temporary, then it will be returned by value from this function. So this is what we want to achieve. Right? And sometimes you want to get something from this function foo, store it, maybe for some access or some use cases, and then call it again in other function as a forwarding reference. So we want to forward something stored on the stack of this function wrapper. In order to do so, you can do it this way. You can call foo1, we've stood forward, you will get something, I don't know if it's value or reference, and I want to store it in the stack, on the stack of the function and then forward it as it was obtained to the next function for processing. The only good solution here is to use auto refref. You're posting, doing auto refref, it preserves lifetimes if needed, if needed. Similarly to L value references to const and R value references, the forwarded reference also pre preserves the lifetime of, of temporaries and then, and binds to everything, right? And then you can stood forward it to the other function. And as you don't have a type, explicit type here, you have to do decal type on red to get the type. Right. 
Another use case for auto refref is in generic context if you are dealing with, with range-based for loop. If you don't know what will be returned from function f, auto refref will bind to everything, right? If you're dealing with vectors, you will never know if it will be vector of bool or int, right? And vector of bool sucks, but uh, this is the only case that actually, the only possible solution that actually will bind to everything. Will allow you to, to, to take the values of this vector and work with it, right? Because vector of bool will return you a temporary on iteration rather than a reference to an object being stored inside of the vector's memory, right? And in this case, notice that you are not forwarding this any, anywhere. So auto refref sometimes is not used for forwarding. So maybe this is a universal difference, right? Because it prevents something as references. Also, Nico Yazutis has some nice talks about, about ranges. He says like how auto refref can be useful in functional arguments to pass ranges, but I don't want to go into this discussion on this talk because it's well behind our timelines and, and, and schedule. From talking to the views, the constants, reference propagation, it's out of the scope for today's talk. But you can see Nico's talks, and, and he will tell you why auto refrap may be useful, and maybe only the possible solution uh, to make it work correctly for some function templates working with views. So as a summary, I would say use const my type strong type reference when read access is only needed. It binds to everything. If you need only read access, like to print on the screen, then this is good enough. It binds to everything, right? And it's cheap to instantiate by the compiler. Use both const my type L value reference and R value reference in case you're playing with sync. If there's a limited number of, of parameters, if it's not too expensive for you to, to, to type. Otherwise, consider passing by value, by my type. Use tref to forward the argument. Beware of single argument constructors, right? They will hijack your copy constructor. Remember that it binds to everything, not just the type you need, right? So in case you want to have some conversions and, and you want to have convertible to, if you want you to constrain something to be something like range type, you have to constrain it with range because it will take everything. Remember that it's not an R value, right? It will also bind to L values and maybe surprising if you want to implement move semantics on that. Use decal type auto as a function return type to perfectly return things, especially in generic context when you don't know what you are dealing with. And also use auto refref in generic context for forwarding differences, for later forwarding, or for range based for loops. Because again, you don't know what you are dealing with, so it's better to be safe using that. And that's it. Those are four new differences. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Really great talk, especially on the um, kind of like you know, with the um, constructor taking the single you know template type and all, and all that. Um, not a question, but just a comment around like. Um, Clang Tidy has a, has some of these C++ core guideline checks, which will check if you're using if you're forwarding correctly or using a move on a forwarding reference. So definitely recommend Clang Tidy checks to make sure that you're using the forwarding yeah, or move sure. references mm -hmm. correctly. Yeah, that's thank a good you. recommendation. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the talk. But one comment: you were showing a sync implementation, which should be optimal, right? And it's similar to what things like a CD optional do. Unfortunately, it's not optimal. It's not optimal for PR values, mm -hmm. things return from the functions, because language guarantees a copy elision for them. But uh, when you forward them, it's not longer a PR value, so you add extra move, or if there's no move, there's a copy. So you can't construct a function return value directly into your sync. Mm. I think I will have to think a bit more about it as we are nearly out of time and, and yes, but, but I think you might be right, but I, will, I would probably would have to talk to you about later after, after, the, after okay. the, the talk. Okay. Because I may not actually visualize what you actually said right now. But thank you. Uh, yes?
Thank you for the talk. Uh, there's a slide where you showed the T, U, and Z references, mm -hmm. uh, but you said that U and Z are only the forwarding references, but T is not, because uh, I think T is templated on the class, but not on the, the constructor. Um, okay, I'm coming. All right. This, this is just the point I didn't understand. This one, understand. right? Yes, right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, why T is not a forwarding reference? Uh, T is not a forwarding reference because T is not a part template parameter of the function template here. A is a constructor being a function template, and T is not the parameter of this function template. Okay. So T is not being deduced here. It's a okay. fixed template parameter of a class A, oh. which is not being deduced in this function code. Okay, so it's deduced at the class level, not at the function level, that's why? Yeah, this is, yeah. at this point, it's just a fixed, like, 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 like it doesn't have to, it, it's any type, but it's not being deduced in yes. this function code. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Thank you everyone for coming. If you have any questions, we can talk during the break. <laughs>